Hi, I'm Stefan Farou, and this is the third installment in my video overview of my book Getting the Message Across How to Use Presentation Software Such as PowerPoint to Give Interesting Technical Presentations. Chapter 3 talks about what you put on your slides, which represents your vision of your subject. There will be text, such as a program or a theorem, there may be annotations, and very often you will have graphical elements, for which you mostly have the choice between charts, smart art, pictures, and shapes. In this video, I'll only talk about a technique I'm a big fan of, which is combining shapes, clip arts, and sometimes edited screenshots to stage fake demos. Sometimes your audience expects a real demo, but very often you can stage something that will actually be more effective in a presentation. Suppose that in the course of the presentation I want to show the result of a web search. I can of course exit from the presentation software, switch to browser, and do it for real. This disrupts the presentation, the search may not return what I'm expecting because I'm in a different country, auto-completion, typos and sponsored results may all become embarrassments. I can instead include a video or screenshots of an actual search. But then, why should I show one search engine instead of another one? I can very easily represent an abstract web search with a white rectangle, to which I add a black frame and an inner shadow, and a text box that, with a suitable background and a bit of fancy formatting, makes a convincing button, to which I add a cursor image that can be as big as I want, and with a little animation I can run a convincing web search by only advancing to the next animation or slide. A web search is easy to fake, but you can convincingly suggest far more sophisticated operations. Let's take slideware as an example. Whichever version of PowerPoint, LibreOffice or Keynote you are using, you have a window which is a rectangle, a kind of menu somewhere for which I only need to show details when I'm talking of a particular feature, this menu is also a rectangle, another rectangle for the current slide, a sub-window showing the neighboring slides, and a frame in this area around the current slide. You are seeing nothing else than rectangle shapes, differently colored, sometimes with a shadow and sometimes without, and yet you should easily identify this as a generic presentation software program. A cursor image again, which, as it's an image, I can make as big as I want, so that people in the back row can clearly see it. My fake demo will be far more legible than an actual one, but there are other advantages. I can show things that I couldn't in an actual demo. In a demo, whenever I click, people guess it from on-screen results. In a fake demo, a mouse clip art allows me to clearly distinguish a left from a right click. I can even simulate a touch screen and figure swipes. It becomes more understandable for your audience. The biggest of all benefits, though, is for you, the presenter. With a real demo, it doesn't matter how well you have rehearsed it, you'll have to focus on what you do and will be stressed by all the eyes in your audience that will be spying on every key you strike. With a fake, stage demo, all you have to do is click on the button of your remote control to trigger the next animation. No need to worry about anything, you are free to interact with your audience and, believe me, this alone is invaluable.